This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Hey kids! Wait, Tommy! Tommy! Tommy, what, Tommy, what, Tommy! What, 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 what? <laughs> hey, I have a question. Are you ready for school to be over? Yes! Yeah. Are you yes! ready? Okay, are you ready for summer to start? Yes! Yes! Are you ready? Final question. Are you ready for another amazing, awesome VBS to be happening? Woohoo! Woohoo! Wait. Wait, but how's it gonna work? Every day you tune in to St. Peter either on Facebook or on YouTube, and you'll see our virtual VBS online. I'll be there to welcome you, sing fun songs, Pastor Hayes and Pastor Hintz will be there to lead us through our daily Bible story, and you two are going to be there to help them. Mrs. Eden? Yeah. Have you met Tommy yet? That's one of the new things as well. Tommy, say hi. Hi! Tommy Hello. just came. Tommy just came home from college. I think that's why he was sleeping, wasn't it? Yeah. You're tired, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That's okay. Anyway, but he's going to be here every day to help us with VBS. VBS is one of my favorite summer activities. I can't wait. What's the theme this year, Mrs. Eden? Jesus loves me. Every day, one of the letters in the word loves will tie into that day's Bible story and the craft we're meaning and what it means to us. That's a mystery to me. What could L-O-V-E-N-S stand for? Will we get to do crafts too? Yes, Miss Donna is going to lead us through step by step through the daily Bible craft activity. It's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be fun. But what if the kids at home don't have any crafts and things at their house? Well, when you register, we will set aside a craft kit for you that you can pick up at St. Peter the week before VBS starts. When can kids register? You can register now online through June 7th. Is VBS June 15th to 19th this year? Absolutely, sure is. It will start on June 15th and go through that Friday the 19th and every morning at 9 a.m. our video will be live. But you can watch it throughout the day just in case if your family is busy at that time. Oh, that's great because I usually wake up around lunchtime. You are too funny, Tommy. I'm glad you're home to help us, because I think you'll be waking up around 9 o'clock to help us every day, so I don't think you'll get to sleep in until noon that day. But let's finish our song, and we'll register for VBS whenever we get home. You ready? Where's your light? Where's your light? Ready? All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine. All around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Well, the Lord be with you. It is wonderful to be with you here on this Pentecost Sunday. And today we're going to have the opportunity to visit a couple of festivals as we look at the uh, Festival of Pentecost, obviously, and then 
the Festival of Booths, and we're going to just really explore the God, Word of God and uh, how important it is that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives, not only to keep us connected to saving faith in Jesus, but then as well to send us and empower us in ministry to the world. So I pray God's blessings on your worship this day. Thank you for joining us at St. Peter Lutheran Church in Schaumburg, Illinois. And we're going to begin as we sing, O Holy Spirit, enter in. I invite you to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, 
will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Together we pray. Most, Most merciful God, we can confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore announce the grace of God to all of you, that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God. Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. 
mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 May be seated for our readings this day. Our first reading taken from Numbers, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from Acts, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were there amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, 
that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. And now I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, God of all grace, as we gather this day, especially today we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Once a year we dedicate one Sunday to recognizing how the Spirit's power poured out on us, that your word might be open to us, that we might be connected to Jesus in a very real way, and that your sacraments would be a blessing for us. So now, by the power of your Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to embrace your word this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I wonder what you think about if, if you recall the good old days. You know the good old days? That kind of has a different ring to it now since COVID has entered our world, hasn't it? You know, before COVID, I would have thought about the good old days and might have recalled my 16th birthday when I got my driver's license and I was footloose and fancy free. Or maybe I would recall one of several graduations or the good old days. Maybe I'd think about, obviously, the day that I would marry, wed to my bride, Gretchen. Uh, the good old days when, when our children are born. And I think for many of us, when we think about the good old days, we think about young bodies that didn't hurt as much and, and uh, were much stronger, right? But COVID entered the world. Now the good old days were back when I used to openly visit with friends and family, travel, the good old days just a few months ago meant I could go sit at a restaurant. And, well, especially the good old days meant that I wasn't standing in a pretty empty sanctuary looking at a camera, but I'd be speaking directly to you face to face. The good old days. Well, today in the book of Acts, we see the good old days of spirit-filled conversions. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself in the text because we don't go that far in the text today, but we recall that after the Spirit was poured out on the disciples, that uh, after Peter preached an amazing and powerful sermon, some 3,000 people came to saving faith in Jesus Christ that day. And I want to kind of set the context for all of this because this day of Pentecost was actually a Jewish festival, and Pentecost meaning 50 days, 50 days after the Passover, and, and uh, in, in Hebrew it's Shavuot, which is, um, it, it, it means weeks, and so seven weeks, seven times seven is 49 days, so it's all pretty close there, and it's a festival where you heard, heard already that people from all over surrounding Jerusalem came to celebrate. What are they celebrating? Some say that it's the the gift, uh, the revelation of God's law, the Torah to the people, but it's definitely as well as a celebration of a grain festival and grain offerings would be brought as well. So, uh, you know, keep in mind that we have lots of different people there at this time from lots of different areas. And what's key about this, I think, one of the keys is most all of these people would have spoken a common language in, in, in the time uh, in Greek or maybe even some in Hebrew. But when the Holy Spirit filled the disciples, uh, they were able to speak and people heard this word of God in their native tongue, the tongue that was closest to their hearts. So I want to read the first part of this to you again real quick. And uh, just listen to this. And as I read these first, I believe, 13 verses, I want you to look at who it is that's listening. Who it is that's listening, and perhaps then we'll look at how they react as well. So if you know anything about the Pentecost experience in the Holy Spirit, we get this image of the, the, the tongues of fire, but... but uh, Let's look at who else was there other than the apostles. So, here we go. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they, being the disciples, were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, that's the part we're probably most familiar with and what we think about when we think about Pentecost. But let's go on. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Then you have that litany, that list of the places that they're all from. And then it says in verse 12, And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked, saying, They are filled with new wine. All right, so here we have, um, we're first introduced to the hearers, and it says that there were devout men from every nation under heaven. Devout, meaning God-fearing people were in the midst. They were there, and they were hearing in their own native language, and as I said, that's their mother tongue close to their heart. And so it seems like there's goodness in the air as all of this unfolds, and they're perplexed. But in the end, we see that as all were amazed, they're asking, what does this mean? But others mocked. We have mockers in the midst. And, you know, maybe these mockers are some of the same people that were in Pilate's courtyard when they were, were yelling to crucify Jesus. They, they could have been the same people that uh, were, were mocking him as he was being uh, unjustly tried and executed, right? Could it be the same people? It's, it's very possible. It's so sad that when we have so much goodness going on and God's doing His work, that sometimes mockers are just going to be there. We see this in our world, don't we? We know that persecution is part of the, the Christian walk, but nobody appreciates being mocked. And if we watch the news and the media, we know that, that uh, faith groups of all kinds are, are growing increasingly impatient with uh, this uh, shelter in place and everything that's going on right now. And yet there are people out there that, well, they're mockers. They mock us. As a matter of fact, I was on a Facebook group that, and somebody posted something and it said, almost verbatim, try to recall it from memory, it said, if churches want to open their doors, they should pay taxes. And I read some of the responses. Some people agreed and mocked further. Other people argued that, but charitable organizations, we do so much good for the world. And quite honestly, that's, that's not the logical argument. The logical argument with this mocker would have been to say, uh, we are a 501c3 charitable organization, and if you're going to strip that privilege of not paying taxes from churches, then you have to do it for all, and be reminded that, well, some of the faith-based organizations that are out there that are 501c, or not faith-based, other organizations that are 501c3s would include Planned Parenthood and the American Civil Liberties Union. See, that argument just doesn't work. But mockers don't care. They just throw their stuff out there. What did I do in response to this? Well, first I unjoined that group. I just feel like, you know what? If it's not healthy, I don't need to be a part of it. But the second thing I did was prayed for that individual and those individuals. There's something in the heart that is hardened, and it, it, it really burdens me. I question, did, did a Christian hurt them, or did, did the church offend them in some way, what happened? And, and I literally lift these individuals up in prayer. We have to ask ourselves then, well, isn't this, aren't these the same people that Jesus died for? And the answer is yes. He died for you, he died for me, and he died for them as well. He died for all the sins in the world. So, what can change their hearts? We know the answer. 
what we celebrate this very day, the gift of the Holy Spirit that was poured out on that day, that Pentecost celebration in Jerusalem some 2,000 years ago, just as Jesus had promised. So I want to continue reading this text because now Peter responds. And you might say in a way he kind of responded, he responded by laying out the Word of God and hope for these people. And I'm guessing he was probably praying all the way as well. It says in verse 14, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. So it's like 9 a.m. in the morning. But then he goes to the prophet Joel. He says, but this is what is uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Beautiful words to share in that moment. Words of hope for all people. Words of hope even for those, those mockers in that moment. And the beauty of this is, while we see this image of the disciples receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise is that the Holy Spirit goes out for all people. It's just not exclusive to, to this little group that's going to preach boldly. And No, it's for all people. That's what it says uh, in verse 17, and I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. The Spirit's there for you and for me. To what end? Well, to the end that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This was the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised. Jesus promised the gift of the Spirit. And as we go to John's Gospel, we see Jesus. This is probably the shortest Gospel lesson you'll ever have read to you in a worship service. But it's so packed full of hope and promise. Now, once again, setting context, it's the Feast of the Booths. The Feast of the Booths is a, a time when the Jews would recall their time in the wilderness wanderings, and, and they would spend seven days in a tent. And on the last day, this is the last day of the Festival of Booths, when Jesus makes this comment about the Spirit, and on this last day, what they would do is they would go out and they would take and pour water out of a clay pitcher to recall God giving them water out of a rock. So Jesus' mentioning of water has a very specific and pointed purpose here in our Gospel reading for today. Let me, uh, let me just uh, uh, read it to you again. On the last day of the feast, the great, that, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And that's the end of what Jesus said. But then John goes on to explain, Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For... As yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So Jesus says that, you know, our hearts are, out of our hearts, the Spirit will flow like what? Like rivers of living water. So is this the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, perhaps? Is it Christian living, living to the glory of God? Yep, perhaps it is, but it's all stuff we do by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Spirit. And it, it says, John says that, 
that, that uh, Jesus had not yet been glorified. See, Jesus was glorified in his death and his resurrection. And so without the promise or the gift of the Holy Spirit, we're not connected to the hope that comes through Jesus' death and resurrection. See, the Holy Spirit didn't die and rise. But the, without the Holy Spirit, there would be no value in Jesus' death and resurrection. Why? Because it's only by the power of the Spirit that we are connected to the hope that comes in Jesus. That Jesus connects us to the power, the power of life over death that comes through faith in Jesus. In Jesus, as we all know, His death was for the sins of the whole world. And His resurrection gives us the promise as well that on the last day we will rise with Him as well. I like this. I, once again, I get ideas from notes I read, and I, Phil Brandt is one that I, I take from quite frequently. And he says he loves the analogy of a lamp. And I've heard this one before, too, and it just recalls what an easy image this is for us as we think about what is the work of the Holy Spirit as He connects us to life-saving faith in Jesus and then empowers us to live God-pleasing lives. Well, it's like a lamp. And if you have a lamp setting there and it's not plugged in, it's really of no value. So the Holy Spirit is the cord. It's what connects, is, it connects the bulb to the power source. The power source obviously, obviously being, well, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so when we plug into that by the power of the Holy Spirit, the light of Christ shines bright in our lives, giving us, yes, hope for forgiveness and eternal life with our Lord, but not only that, allowing our lights to shine in a world, a world that, yep, is full of devout, God-fearing people. It's a world that's filled with mockers as well. But it's a world that we know everyone needs life-saving faith in Jesus. I want to address one unfortunate reality because in Peter's experience, it didn't say that everyone there that was there was saved that day. No, the Holy Spirit may pour out on people and, and yet they people will sometimes unplug. But we give thanks to God for the faith that we have, and we pray that God would work through us by the power of His Spirit to help others plug into the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. So thanks be to God for all who are connected and will be connected by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know, those good old days, those good old days are right here, right now, as we are, well, Spirit-fed and Spirit-led. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we take opportunity to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Would you please stand? Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we do uh, return then a portion of our income, our offerings to our good, good and gracious God as he has been so generous to us. So at this time we do collect our tithes and our offerings. You may be seated.
And now I invite you to please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, today, as we hear about the good old days, uh, Lord, we know that um, those days then, as they are even today, are good because of you. And Father, the best is yet to come when you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. We ask and pray, Father, that you continually help us, Lord, to know and remember that there will be those who mock us, who come after us for our faith and what we believe. But Father, today, even though we will be persecuted, you have provided hope. You have provided the way that we should call upon the Lord and we will be saved. You've made that promise and your promises are always good. Continue to bless us and be with us that we may always believe this. And Lord, carry out that message to a world who needs to hear that desperately. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, today we ask and pray that you be with all of us as um, we would live out the lives uh, that you've called us to, uh, using those fruits of the Spirit that he has given, that we should not only live, but also with, uh, live with, but also love our neighbor. Help us to have a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own ways, but help us to be able to walk alongside you, following your commands, following what you have given us to do. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God in heaven, we ask and pray that you would uh, be with a number of people today who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Uh, we pray for the family of Pastor Eric Tricky uh, from St. Paul Decatur, uh, who has been battling um, his illness. And we ask and pray that you would uh, now, as you receive him to eternal glory, Father, continue to be with um, not only his family, but his congregation as they mourn that loss. Lord, give them your peace at this time. And Father, also we ask and pray that you be with the family of George Floyd. Uh, Lord, it's, he's the man who has made national headlines and uh, through a tragic situation. And I pray, Lord, that you would just be with this country as um, we would not be divided, but we would come together and uh, help one another in a time of need. Lord, there's so much anger, there's so much frustration, uh, there's so much wrong. And we ask and pray, Father, that today you would bring peace to your people, that we would continue to love one another and be kind. Lord, uh, continue to uh, just be with those families and, and friends who are mourning and continue to help our country be at peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, Heavenly Father, we pray for those uh, re-entering the workforce. Lord, as restrictions are, are again, released, as they are, uh, again, allowed for people to go back into the workforce, just be with them. Keep them safe, protect them. And Father, as um, people uh, go out, Lord, help them to make wise choices. Uh, continue to keep them safe and um, help them to be able to uh, get back into the swing of things with work and being able to provide for their families. We also ask at this time, Lord, that you would bless all first responders, all medical professionals, and government officials. Uh, we especially lift at this time Heather, who's uh, working on the East Coast. Father, we know that um, she has been um, just one of those people who has not given up but uh, continued to help people in time of need. And uh, it's people like that, Lord, we just ask for your continued protection and help and uh, your guiding hand upon her and all who serve uh, in this way, especially dealing with the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that, Father, you'd be with those who are serving in our military at this time, especially Ben Sissick and Brian Casting. Continue to guide them and direct them, keep them safe, and Lord, be with their families who wait uh, for their return back at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, Almighty God, uh, we know that you have uh, ordered all things in heaven and on earth. We ask that you would bless Donald, our president, uh, JB, our governor, Congress of the United States, and all elected and appointed civil servants that, uh, again, as they rule to hopefully protect the weak and preserve life from, con from conception all the way to its natural end. Lord, we pray for a continued peace upon our land. Guide them, direct them to help wi to make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask and pray, Father, that uh, there would be an end to the pandemic. Uh, continue to uh, restore people and communities. Just uh, help them, Lord, in their time of need. And, uh, Lord, if the virus would be um, uh, healed or, or really fixed, I guess, uh, is the better term. But uh, we ask and pray, Lord, for your healing hand upon our land and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And, Father, at this time, we do know that you uh, love and uh, care for your people. Continue to deliver from illness and suffering those uh, that have been placed on our list this day. Linda Futzenreuter, June Fanslow, Sue Wins, Debbie Bodner, 
Christine Leaf, Gary Albrand, Karen Mueller, Gene Newman, Frank Donahue, and John Schrader. Lord, continue to uh, give them your peace and help them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today, Father, we give you uh, just prayers of thanksgiving for the healthy birth of Tom and Georgine Beasley's great-granddaughter, Kasten Coomer, uh, this past week. We, Father, we just uh, lift the family up, the baby as well as the mom, continue to heal them and uh, be with them as they uh, continue to uh, grow and, and, again, enjoy this time of life. We also pray for all of our graduates, Lord, uh, especially here, Lord, this week as uh, St. Peter um, had special times for their graduates and um, uh, the, the perseverance and dedication that they had throughout the year and to be able to finish up strong and to be able to move on to the next phase or season of life, as they say. Continue to bless them and help them to be a blessing as they serve you in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers, whether said um, this day or out loud in our, uh, in our minds, in our hearts, uh, or out loud. We just thank you for hearing us at all times and always. Continue to help us to always come to you for everything that we need. We love you, and we thank you for hearing us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now together we pray our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Well, I tell you, I've got a few announcements here for you today, and first of all, I want to start with the uh, food pantry. Once again, I celebrate your responsiveness as I have asked for you to restock our food pantry. It looks very good, but we're going to need more. We are going to look forward to opening our food pantry again next week. And so with that, uh, we're going to need more and more food. So continue to bring that up here, and we are blessed by it, and so will the people that receive uh, what they need. Second of all, we've had a real uh, kind of almost a lull in prayer request, and it, I know the care cards, you don't have them at home, and, and uh, you know, just remember that you can fulfill a prayer request, and the Family Ties, I believe, has a link. The website definitely does. Not only that, you can call the church office, and, and remember, that's optional. You can have Pastor Greg and I pray over something over the course of the week, or you, you can also add it to congregational prayers, so include those. And then lastly, the piece I know everybody's waiting for. After it was announced that churches can reopen, uh, we are establishing plans at this moment to reopen uh, a week from today on June 7th and uh, to do so responsibly. And so uh, just look for the emails, the that will come your directions with specific information. It's definitely going to look different. We're not going to be passing offering plates. We'll drop our offering in the plate as we come forward for communion, and there will be no common cup, and we're not even sure if we're going to leave the pencils in the, the pews. If you want to write out a care card or something, you're going to have to uh, bring your own pencil. Um, and so we're working a lot of these things out so that we can be responsible and create the safest environment as possible. We also respect the fact that some of you will not be comfortable coming back here um, at this stage yet. And, and we certainly respect that decision by you. And uh, as a result, we will be streaming services as well. So uh, with that, I just uh, look forward to seeing faces in these pews again. And if you choose not to come, I'm going to miss you. And so will Pastor Greg. Okay, so with that, God's blessings on your week ahead. Remember, we're spirit-fed and spirit-led, and uh, the Spirit connects us to Jesus in a powerful way that we might not only know forgiveness and life through Him, but that we also would be lights to the world that they too would know Jesus in their lives. 
With that, we'll continue then in our service as we sing Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.